وما يعلم جنود ربك إلا هو صدق الله العظيم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الحمد لله بيد فضل الله سبحانه وتعالى from last time those of you who were present you will be aware and you have also heard summary as well uh, by Naeem as well brother Naeem we are trying to learn something which can benefit us immensely it is such power that in front of that power nothing can stand and nothing can stop and it is also such treasure which are the keys to other treasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and every prophet and every messenger alayhi salam when they came they all of them they introduced these powers and these entities so much so that they came obviously as messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but they asked people that if you will not believe in those powers which are called malaika angels such entities that you will not be considered a believer you will not be considered a Muslim a Mu'min no matter you believe in the Prophet and Allah but you don't believe in these in between you will be declared as that you have not believed because Allah Jalla Majduhu has created the world and also created such entities such beings which manage which execute which and in the heavens be it the stars and galaxies be it the rain be it the people dying yeah, obviously you know every one knows that actually when person dies when the angel of death visits the person he takes something away which no doctors no one can bring back because he takes the the spirit the ruh actually away similar is that there are angels which bring the spirit at the time when in the womb of the mother when a baby is in the womb of the mother it is the malaika who brings there are angels who bring the uh, the ruh who brought you meaning your personality and it is angels who then take away that being which is you at the time of death so they are powerful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa jalla wa ala mentioned in the Quran فَلَوْلَا إِن كُنْتُمْ غَيْرَ مَدِينِينَ فَلَوْلَا إِذَا بَلَغَتِ الْحُلْقُومُ وَأَنْتُمْ حِينَ إِذِنْ تَنْظُرُونَ Allah says that when your life, your soul, your spirit reaches the throat. If you have seen anyone dying before dying, there comes a stage where they can't breathe because the spirit is being extracted and when it reaches here, it's like suffocation, a kind of strange sound and strange voice actually comes. People are there. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that when your souls reach that place. Wa antum hina idin tandurun. 
and you all you the family the husband the wife the doctors the scientists every power the, and you are looking yourself it's in front of you the person tarji'unaha in kuntum sa you can neither stop it leaving nor allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said if you believe there is no other power then bring this back this person back it's like um, if your car is not working uh, because the battery has died you can replace it with a battery engine is not working you can replace it with the engine and the car starts working let's say a person have a heart attack so his heart has stopped and then he's passed away the spirit have left now if the heart is replaced with a healthy heart with a healthy heart then it should stop it should start working again because then another component has been put in there for many a times even the person's own heart does not work and the doctors and the people they try to resuscitate it actually but when the spirit has left then nothing works so allah azza wa jal is challenging those people who think oh i am everything i am doing whatever i want and there is no life after death and there is no god so quran is saying okay if you don't believe then who is doing this to you there is some power so you have the power so let let you bring the power and revive this person this your mother your son is dying in front of you where is he going which power is taking it away from your hands in its person is in your hand allah is saying then there is one possibility if you are truthful tarji'unaha in kuntum if you are truthful there is no life no god then bring it back then bring this person back simply after i have taken the the, the spirit and if not if you cannot then no you are very weak in front of this power anyway i was referring to that there is certain entities which every prophet of allah the messenger of allah asked alayhi wasallam us and commanded us to believe in their called angels the malaika the superpowers after allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they have the power and without that a person as you say sometimes see the witnessing the shahada people are taking shahada and in that after allah amantu billahi wa malaikatihi i believe in allah and i believe in angels it is the second entity now islam in quran and prophet ali sallallahu alaihi taught us how to get this power on your side you know today you say oh i know this i have two friends they are very strong one is computer scientist one is actually this person if i need anything oh i have this i know this person is a gangster he will help me he will be on my side people are oh i have this i have that they all are helpless in front of these powers but what to say that when you can get these powers on your sides angels like jibril alayhi salam who the prophet alayhi salam said that have 600 wings and he spreads one wing and it covers all the horizon east and west nothing can be seen the angels who can put all these planets and galaxies imagine how many galaxies planets there are millions and millions stars and billions galaxies bigger than the size of the sun in the books it comes with the angels who can just pick it up and eat it like you eat a piece of bread all this planets and stars now sayyidina musa alayhi salam was astonished and surprised when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned to him he said ya allah then if they are so big in size that 
all earth and the stars, they are like one morsel and one piece for them, then where do they live? Allah says, I have created such fields for them, such houses, dwellings for them where they live. Imagine that world we are not even aware of. We do not know anything about that as such. So, everyone, as I said actually, human being is nature, they want power. They want power, they try to attain. Why do many people, many people come in politics to serve people? But many come in politics just to attain power, they want some power. So I will be prime minister, I will be minister, I will be police officer, for example, but I will have that power as well. Many are not interested in wealth, they want, they are after power, that because of this wealth, I will be honored and things. Many people praise others, make them friends, give them gifts and befriend them that they, oh, this person have high contacts, he knows this and he knows that and he knows. Human beings, they want power. Now Islam has taught that you do not need to seek power from other creation who are just helpless in a way when another power become active. And that power after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the power of malaika, power of angels, entities. If you can befriend them, you can actually get their help, blessings, mercy, rahmah, support. Imagine your life will be not good in this life, but they also will help you at the time of death when not father, mother, Wife, husbands, spouses, children, no one will be able to help you. All friends will say goodbye, we cannot help you. As you've seen in the coronavirus, they're not even to fully can offer janaza. They say, oh, we would have come to your funeral, but you know it is virus system going on. So, sorry, you can just bury him. We can't touch him. We can't do this, etc., etc. That is the loyalty which people have, they are limitations. So, but the Quran says, the inna allazina qalu rabbuna Allah, that those who have believed and they say and believe our Rabb, our cherisher, our sustainer, our Lord is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning then they are steadfast meaning that they stay on this what they have said they read the kalima and now when tests come when they are tested they still stay for example when time when you know this is right this is wrong but at the time you need something people say oh, okay i can't now uh, I'll have to do this because actually uh, I, do this. I have to do this because of actually such and such. When tests come, when hunger come, when need come, when actually a person is in difficulty, they sometimes resort to wrong means. But these people stay steadfast. Allah said, That angels come to them at the time of death, this is, or even before. Allah takhafu wa la tahzanu. They say to them, don't fear for what's going to come now. Don't fear for your future because fear is for future. They say don't fear for anything in future, what's going to happen after that now, where you'll go, what's happened on, on the day of judgment, you don't need to fear. Allah takhafu, don't fear anything because you have been an obedient worshipper and you fulfill the purpose. Allah takhafu wa la tahzanu. And don't grieve, don't grieve of what, about what, what you have left on the face of the earth. Because there can be two, you see dying person can have two problems. One is what's going to happen after death. One is the problem, what he has left behind, his children, his wife or his, her husband or 
his business and his dunya, his circle of friends and all these things. They say, Allah takhafu wala tahzanun. Neither fear for future wala tahzanu. And do not grieve, grieve for anything which you left because you will be compensated for everything. Rather, don't be grieved, don't fear. You will never think or oh, this thought will not appear that you've left the world and there's a lot more enjoyment, very much good company, more better company, more better world, more better places than this dunya is coming. We rather give you good news of such actually the Jannah where every Jannah is named where everything is person is pride. And then they say, Nahnu awliya ukum. We were and we are your friends. Fid dunya, nahnu awliya ukum fil hayati dunya wa fil akhira. We are your friends and helpers in this world and also in the next world as well. When you will get out of the grave, we will be one who will be taking you. We will be helping you. And the time uh, over the bridge of Sirat, over passing over the hellfire and the difficulties of that day, 50,000 years. We will be doing that. So don't, do not, we are your friends. Nahnu awliya'ukum fil hayati dunya wa fil akhirah and in akhirah. So that's what I was referring to, that there is a way and there are many ways which the Prophet Islam taught that you can make these entities, these beings of light, these powerful beings which are called Malaika and angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they can be your helpers and friends and with you, but you have to, there is a way how to actually get them on your side, how to befriend them. That's why we must, it's a must to believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla wala mentioned so that we may benefit because it's he does not benefit Allah. Power, I, don't, I do not need to tell you about the power of angels. You have seen power of one unseeable virus. So if I tell you the angel Jibreel is like this, angels are so powerful, angels can do the, They are the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and which the Quran says they are powerful. But we human beings have become helpless in front of one virus, actually small virus which we cannot even control or know uh, actually so many months ago, maybe now maybe human beings, be, because this is a, it's not, if Allah Azzawajal wants they can send more powerful things as actually was sent on the previous nations, but this is like a slight warning for people. A slight warning for people that actually to change their ways and to tell them that where the power lies. The country which say I am superpower, America is suffering the most from this. Imagine. And the, some of the poorest countries who don't have technology, don't have good health system, like let's say in pa Pakistan, Bangladesh, others, in Africa, their country, they never heard about this virus, I don't know. In Africa, their country, they never even heard about this virus, up to now. There's no virus at all, at all like this. Day. And they are the most, actually you may say, nations which actually who don't have any technology, no medical science, no at least. And the country which said, I am superpower, that is suffering more, you cannot control a virus and then they say we control this and we control that and we control this. If you are so powerful and it is a, to a human being then just save your own people. 5,000, 6,000 people if dies of a country they, it becomes a world war. And here more than 100,000, 200 people have died, and no one is actually accepting any responsibility or saying, just saying, okay, we can just do whatever we can. 
So I do not really, so imagine if this is the power of, which is not even living thing as such. Although it is a living, it has entity, but not living the bacteria, but a virus which don't have even life as such. If, if that is so powerful, small thing, what about the angels and malaika? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing the world that where, who is the powerful, who is the superpower, where the power lies. In front of the angels, malaika, nothing, no virus, no nothing, everything actually. Even spirits cannot move. You know, souls are taken, spirits are taken by the angels of death. So even spirits can't move without actually, they have such, such grip, such power, that rue we can't even see, we don't know. I've never seen my spirit, for example, it is in me, but the angels, they control it, they bring it, they take it away, and they are, so angels have very super type grips, because they represent the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they are so subservient to Allah jalla majduhu, that uh, they all say, subhanaka, subhanaka ma abadnaka haqqa ibadatik, that is the tasbih of angels, on the day of judgment, which they will say, and now as well many say, what it means, they say, from the birth, from their birth, millions of years, and to their death, they stay obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at the end they are going to say, before dying, subhanaka ma abadna ka haqqa ibadatik, O oh Allah, you are perfect, we are not perfect. And we have never worshipped you as you deserve to be worshipped. The way which you should be worshipped and praised, we have never been able to do that. Forgive us. So they are so. So last time uh, I mentioned that uh, there are some acts which a person can do. Um, that you can get their power on your side. Like when you see some people, you say, oh, he is a very lucky person, he is unlucky person, this person is a blessed person. Where do these blessings come from? Where do that luck come from? It come from Allah, but through angels, mostly. Malaika of mercy and rahmah and barakah, actually, it comes. So, Last time I'll just um, uh, give you an example, uh, I think uh, uh, the name has actually mentioned to you, two, two or three acts I mentioned which you can do every day uh, and they can be very helpful for you. But do practice them, for example the act which is mentioned that before leaving your house, stop come into the presence of Allah and make your intention good that I am going out for a good purpose, I'm going out for something good, make some, I'm going to visit a brother, I'm going to do shopping for me, some, or I'm going to go for a walk so that I can be healthy, meaning doing good intention, or go for your job, as soon as you will step, an angel will accompany you with a banner. So the way to do it practically applies, tomorrow do that, and see what the difference is. That once you will go out of the house and you will have this presence of Allah and also the presence of the angel. That the angel is with me, psychologically you become strong as well. And you will see that there is an unseen power which is assisting you in wherever you are going. These are something to do, like instead of saying, well, oh, do dua for me, or I am doing, etc, etc. You can get such powers on your side, which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa taught. So, so there are many, so we covered um, two or three last time. Today we will cover also some more. One is that uh, for night time, if you want to spend night in the company of angels. 
you know, nighttime people say put their bedding, everything, or oh, um, there should be a fan, AC, comfort, etc. But still, they have to take sleeping pills or something, they can't sleep. Because that comes from somewhere else. See? Like one person went to a showroom, a bed showroom, where they sell bed, and when they were very, very high end, high quality bed, they said this is bed is. Uh, for example, uh, 100,000 corona, 10,000 pounds, very good. So the customer asks the salesman, well it is so, it has so much comfort, does this bed guarantee sleep? It is so precious, it is so costly. But does this guarantee it have a guarantee that a person will be able he said I no it doesn't guarantee sleep. Some people are sleeping on the roads very comfortably and some are changing sides in the luxury mattresses and things that they can't actually sleep. So a person wants comfort, a person wants to spend night in a good way. In a, what to say if you can spend with an angel. If you can spend with uh, such a being of light, but what is the way how you will? Because most of the time if devils are with you, devilish entities, shaitanic entities, so you get nightmares, shaitan actually nightmares, other bad thoughts, sinful and after person is distressed in a way. So there are many ways, many sunnahs of Rasulullah but this is one way he taught that you can not only during the day but night be with an angel. When you are asleep, a light entity, a light will surround you. You can try this night today. You can try it tonight. So what is it? Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala who says, May Allah be pleased with him. Say that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam once said, Whoever spends the night in state of purity, wudu, and he is his body is clean and his wudu is actually well. That one. That's why our mother, Umul Mumineen, the mother of believer. Sayyida Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha She says I have seen that the Prophet Islam would do wudu before every salah and like he will do wudu before every salah he will regularly do wudu before sleeping Even though he had wudu, he will still do wudu before sleeping. So like there is now, we think we are sleeping, so we sleep most time, time most in the dirtiest way. As in now, we are only anyway, we are going to bed. It doesn't matter what is in our body, what state we are in. You know, the, we think we, now we are going to another world. And then actually, but the Prophet Wasallam did the opposite. But the benefit of that he وسلم, mentioned, if we know that you will be in wudu every night. You know, people take comfort, people uh, they, they in sleep, they do exercise, they, uh, they drink, they have um, yesterday we were sitting with a brother, he was mentioning people are so conscious about their health that they have like Apple watches which is, they are even taking photographs of the food, telling them how many calories in the food, uh, and this food, and now I'm going to eat. This body is going to vanish one day anyway. It needs to be looked after, but the, whatever is in the body, the spirit, even needs more care than actually just taking photographs of apples and other things and taking so many calories I'm taking etc etc people are so calm. when they know benefit they become conscious they are guiding 
And all this body, no matter how much you look after, after 70 years, 100 years, actually it's going to go away. There are many bodies, dead bodies lying in Russia, uh, in some places where very rich people, they said that maybe we have died and there's no cure, so keep our bodies uh, operating in certain way, so that maybe after 100 years, 200 years, when some cure, sometime, <coughs> some magic thing comes out, we can be revived. So there are places where their bodies are kept fresh and uh, through technology and other things, but there's no life in there. But they have given so much money. Now that's a different story because that most of them are just drug dealers. So they money. A normal person cannot even afford normal house when they're living. How can he afford millions after death? And some are just generally rich people. Anyway, but the, the, one should look after. Prophet Islam said, do look after. But one not on the expense of that actually. One's akhira, expense of the spirit and the soul, which are more precious, which are going to stay with you. So that's the action of uh, our Prophet Islam. So he, Ali Islam, once mentioned the reasoning or the, uh, you may say, wisdom behind. He said, whoever spends the night in state of purity, spends the night with an angel, with the light being close to him. And Rasulullah ibn Sayyidina ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu says also in a hadith narrated uh, <coughs> actually through him uh, through with him and his father saying that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said purify these bodies of yours and Allah will purify you that keep your bodies clean in wudu and state of ghusl and this also have effect on your inner purification so there is baraka, there is blessings in just staying in wudu and staying actually clean. There is no person who spends the night in state of purity, in state of wudu, but that an angel remains close to him all night. So imagine here now Prophet Islam is mentioning a secret which actually it can be done by anyone it's not actually a difficult matter that okay you are doing whatever but before you go to sleep you have to you have to spend five hours three hours six hours whatever your sleep pattern is you should be going towards actually the bathroom do the wudu for this reason and for purity now when you are going to come towards your bed you will see light you will see peace, you will experience peace all night because an angel is with you. And when they are because of light, darkness goes away, depression goes away, shayateen cannot come near to you because actually the angel is with you. Jinns cannot come near to you, other harm like magic and other influences cannot come closer to you because you are actually in that protected light of the, the, the angels, for example. And not only that, Prophet Islam said, he, that person, he does not pass an hour of the night, an hour of the night does not pass, or he wakes up during the sleep sometime, like a person is changing sides, he wakes up, change sides, or he wakes up, or an hour passes, that the angels say, Oh Allah, forgive your servant, forgive your worshipper. Angel is praying for that person. He's praying for you. That he spent the night in a state of purity. This hadith mentioned by Imam Tabarani with the good Isnad and Imam Mundari as well in his Targheeb and Imam Ibn Habban mentioned in his Sahih uh, these both of a hadith from Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab and also from actually the Sayyidina Ibn Abbas so imagine now this is an action 
which most of us are taking pills, uh, I can't sleep, thing, etc. and many many other matters, blessings which we can never imagine that we can benefit from but and this is a small act. The other one was what you can do during the day which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned. This one is actually simply taking five minutes, three minutes, six minutes, seven minutes, at the most ten minutes and the person actually will get the company of a being of light, of an angel, of an malak. And not only his company, they is also get the dua, the duas of that angel. Prayers of the angel, Ya Allah forgive him. So he will be getting up fresh and forgiven. And imagine if he dies during the night, he will have a blessed death because the angel is with him. But we, are, we have also, and we also think about other things. Oh, there is a jinn maybe coming. Oh, there is shaitan. Oh, there is movement here. When you don't have these things, then obviously shaitan plays with your mind. There is a joke actually. Someone said that if you feel alone at night time and you are worried, watch a horror movie, you'll always feel someone is with you. Hmm? And shaitan and others actually think also come with shaitan. So you want company, you can have company like that. Or and if you want company of actually light, this is a way. And there are many, many other, as I said, there are about 20 different amals which Rasulullah mentioned how you can get access and the company of these blessed beings. One as a practical act, like tomorrow you're going to work, do the one which I mentioned, the other one, the first one. In the night, today, try this and you can experience the difference yourself, company yourself. So there are many other, uh, mashallah, but I will be, because this is a series going on, about five or six, inshallah, discourses, short discourses about angels, so that you can understand, apply for next week, apply this whole the week, and maybe you can share your experience, that what, what is the difference, because this is something to do and experience. It is not something, okay, you can will get in Akhirah only, that is, the reward is a different matter, but this is something Rasulullah mentioned here. So I end up on this now, inshallah, if you can mention the uh, brief summary in Danish, and then we will inshallah finish for us. And if there are any questions, they can ask as well. Alle profeter, som Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala har, har sendt, de har introduceret os til de her engle, de her malarika. Og, øh, og de har også sagt til deres, øh, til deres nationer, hvis de ikke tror på de her malarika engle, så tror man faktisk ikke på det budskab, som, øh, som den profet er kommet med. Så troen på malarika, har været en del af tro på den religion, den lige som den profet er kommet med. Og de nævnte også, at Allahs vilje ofte bliver udført igennem de her ting. Det er dem, der har, der er, de har forskellige ansvar for forskellige ting. Der er nogen, der har ansvaret for, øh, for regn, der er nogen, der har ansvaret for planeter. Det er også dem, der får bliver bedt om at gå ned og at tage ens uh, sjæl. Det er også dem, det er også en engle, der kommer og tager sjælen. Det er også englen, der kommer og indsætter sjælen i et barn og den er i vores mave. Så de har forskellige opgaver, øh, som de udfører hele tiden. 
Og så nævnte de lidt det med sjælen, det er sjælen, det er det, der gør en, at man er, man er levende. Og de gav det her eksempel med, at når man for eksempel dør, eller man får et hjertestop, og et hjerte ikke fungerer længere, så er det. Og hvis du bare udskifter hjertet med et nyt frisk hjerte, så, så bliver man ikke rask for sådan igen. Fordi når sjælen har forladt en, så er man, så er man død. Så, så, det, så det er lige noget, hvad du gør, så, så kan du blive levende igen. Øhm. Og de snakker lidt om, øh, at englene har, Allah har givet dem, Allah har givet dem en, en meget magt, og de kan, og de kan hjælpe os. Og det er det, profeterne læser, du sørger, de har, de har lært os. Øh, og de sammenligner lidt til, med, med det, der sker lige øh, i de her dage. Vi har set, øh, hvor meget magt, sådan en lille virus, som vi, vi ikke engang kan se, hvor meget magt den har. Den har. Øh, og så forestil jer den magt, som Allah som har givet til, til englene. Øh, og de nævnt kort. Uh, nogle af englene, de er, de er meget, meget store. Uh, de nævnte Debrayon, Debrayon i Salam, som har 600 vinger. Uh, og hvis man bare åbner to af vingerne, så, så har den dækket øst og vest. Og der er, og der er engle, der er så store, som kan, som kan faktisk uh, spise hele universet, det der er i universet. Uh, og da Musa i Salam, de hørte om dem, så spurgte de Allah, hvor Allah, hvordan, uh, hvordan passer du på dem, og hvor bor de? Og Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sagde til Musa i Salam, at at jeg har nogle områder, eller nogle, nogle, nogle steder, hvor de her ægne de færdes. Så man har givet stor magt til de her, til de her skabninger. Og de kom så ind på, hvad vi kan gøre, for at de her skabninger kan hjælpe os. Hvad kan vi gøre? Og, og profeterne i du har fortalt os nogle, nogle ting, vi kan gøre. Og de startede med den beretning, som jeg også tidligere har fortalt om, at hvis man om morgenen man går hjemmefra, har en positiv tilgang, og er i bevidst om, at Allah han, han er der, og den her engel, den er der, så vil en dagligdag, så vil man der blive implementeret en engel, som vil hjælpe en resten af dagen. Det vil være, ens, det vil være sammen med en hele dag. Øh, noget andet, som de, de nævnt øh, en masse andre ting også, øh, noget andet, som de også kom ind på, som man kunne Øh, udføre nogle, nogle handlinger. Det var for eksempel, når man sover om aften, og de nævnte et par øh, beretninger, hvis, øh, hvis betydning det er, at hvis man for eksempel er ren, inden man går i seng, det vil sige, hvis man har lavet rundt inden man går i seng, så vil der også være en engel, der vil beskytte en om aften og om natten, og vil sørge for, at, at der er, man ikke bliver forstyrret, og vil sørge for, at man ikke er ikke er stresset, og vil tørre for, at man ikke for eksempel ikke bliver bange, og alle sådan nogle ting, det vil den her engle hjælpe en med. Og de her ting, som de afslutter med at sige, det er ikke nogen ting, vi skal bare høre, og så, men det er nogle ting, vi skal praktisere, og vi skal prøve af. Så det er de to ting, som vi har hørt i dag. Prøv dem af i dag, prøv det af i aften, så, så, kan vi, så vi lige kunne se en, en, en forandring øh, i jeres liv. Øh, og, og det afslutter så med at sige, at der er, øh, og det er en serie, der kører, det her det var serie nummer to, der kommer nogle flere øh, episoder, øh, nu øh, fire fem stykker, øh, hvor at de her emner vil, øh, vil fortsætte øh, og vil, vil komme med nogle flere måder at, at få aktiveret øh, på, hvordan de her emner, de kan, de kan hjælpe os ind Visual for nogen. Er der nogen, der har nogle øh, spørgsmål specifikt til øh, til emner, så må I endelig øh, sige til dem. Og øh, det er nu, I skal spørge, hvis man har nogle spørgsmål. Yes, uh, regarding this doing voodoo uh, before going to sleep. And the protection. Uh, so, if, if a person does wuzu and, and goes to bed, and uh, during the night his his wuzu breaks, would the protection still last? Does he have to renew the the wuzu, or would you comment on that? Yeah. Yes, this is just to do wuzu before sleep. Directly, a person. Then after in the night, and when a person sleeps, the wuzu automatically. But this person will be considered in the wudu in purity in the, in the form as he has slept in purity yes so it is only once before actually uh, the, the sleep I shall mm. forstod alle sammen det der blev sagt og nogen der behov for det bliver også 
spurgte bare på. Okay, Borg, han, han spurgte om, at hvis nu man laver vodou, når man sover, øh, og man kommer til at sin uh, vodou, når man, når man sover om natten, skal man så lave vodou øh, igen? Øh, og der er blevet svaret på, at øh, det, det skal man ikke. Man skal lave vodou, når man, når man sover, og så, og, og så gælder det. Er der flere spørgsmål? Mm. Kitna er der i Maghreb, hvor vi har været hovedet. Åh, tak. بسم الأشواق بريد الحب بصدر ناجا اشتقت إليك صديقا after the Maghrib prayer but whilst you are waiting in these three four minutes I will just mention another hadith in relation to this uh, topic which uh, we experience sometime. Uh, Rasulullah in a war in jihad uh, was and Sayyidina Talha radiallahu ta'ala anhu he was stricken by an arrow so arrow came flying actually in his body and obviously when we when we actually experience any pain or anything, there, there is a reaction to it. So a person will say, ah, ooh, oof, or anything, anything such happened. So Sayyidina Talha obviously was in the war and an arrow st has actually striking him. And he said, oof. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said to him that if you had said instead of oof if you had said bismillah just this word bismillah an angel would have actually come for your help and meaning that with your pain and with your uh, and support and comfort and things because actually angels are attracted to uh, the dhikr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's their food like i we eat drink we have food they are beings of light, their food comes from light. We are beings of the earth, our food comes from the earth. The water comes from the earth, the fruit comes from the earth, the vegetables come from the earth, the wheat comes from the earth. Angels are created with light, their food is light, the dhikr, Quran and the other. So this one, this something which I am telling you now also, you can include in this lesson, uh, a, a short hadith, but it has very great implication we also experience pain sometime you are doing some ho homework and plumbing work or by accident you fall and you by saying uh, something uh, bad many people say bad words when they are hurt or something uh, actually happens to them they might swear they can use swearing word and that attracts more shayateen and it also create a bad effect in them and the other person and the person does not benefit so next time when you experience any pain so something actually strikes you on your finger or you fall or if something anything happen you open a cupboard and you have a finger so it is the word simple word allah's name bismillah as you say this with this mind know in your mind as well that now you are Alhamdulillah, you have got an, a help of an angel with you and you will see the situation uh, will coming better very very quickly and soon because small things sometimes can have very very big impact bad impact as I'm giving you always I have given you the example already of the virus a small thing but imagine it has brought whole of the world to a standstill and after all what it is 
So once you see so all power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really who is actually the ruler but he has given us time he has given us some respite and time so that we can inshallah fulfill our purpose and the purpose is to seek his pleasure benefit his creation and to live uh, a life actually representing his qualities and his sifat that through khulq of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam then we will have a pure life in this dunya and akhirah jazakumullah sanal jaza subhanakallahu wa bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik ma sha'a theek azan de de bismil ash